Here in Miami, La Jaula awaits. The preliminary card always delivers. And we'll get it started here in moments on Paramount Plus. Glad to have you on board. A worldwide audience, a huge record-breaking audience a couple of weeks ago. And now we keep the momentum with Combate Global, knowing we're well into the second half of the year. The rankings are out. A lot to be excited for. The Copa will be determined in a few months. Inside La Jaula, the best in the world come together with mucho más acción. Max Pretos Rodolfo Roman, Thunder Rosa, and this is the main card that we will be calling Christian Barraza versus the number five Bantamweight Ismael Zamora, Enzo Perez versus Luis Chavez, and Colin Luberts faces Marcos Lloreda, where uh, already uh, the gauntlet has been thrown down between those two big, fit 170 pounders. But we get the preliminary action started. Ulysses Molina out of San Francisco. Ramon Vizcara from Mexicali. Little USA, Mexico. That's the best way to get things started here on Combate Global. A real important fight for two guys that need a boost. Let's get it started the best way we can with Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Ulises Molina. Ulises Molina, uh, amateur champion in MMA a couple times, training out of the uh, well-recognized Dragon House MMA. Also, uh, Rodolfo got some uh, some good kickboxing in it. Rufus Sport, we know one of the better gyms in the United States there. So many great names have come out of that sport, and uh, Rufus too, a a a. a huge name in the sport of kickboxing and Muay Thai. In fact, we go on down the history lane where they have the kickboxing and the Muay Thai, but this man is game right here, making a, uh, action inside La Jaula, getting ready for action, and I dig the hairdo, man. Second fight here in Combate. Yeah, he's going red. Let's go back to Lupe. Su contrario, Ramon Vizcarra. Thunder Rosa, this is the man they called Wild Boy from Mexicali, which is a hotbed for MMA, certainly as it applies here to Combate Global. This is his fifth fight here with the company. As we said, he'll feel very comfortable here. Well, he should. And again, he is uh, hes a cachanilla, just like me. And uh, you know, people You're like us. Cachanilla. Yeah, I'm cachanilla too. He's from Mexicali, I'm from Tijuana, and you know, we have the dog inside of us, man. I know. You're repping, <laughs> repping both sides of the border, and obviously that's going to be front and center here with these two fighters. USA-Mexico, the number one rivalry, hands down, when it comes to Combate Global. We go head-to-head. -head. Both fighters still very young, but they've already put the work in, certainly on the amateur levels, now in the pro ranks. Two-inch height advantage for the wild boy, four-inch via the reach. Scotta coming a little over the 136 pound limit. We are ready to go. Our first fight of the night, out of the traps. Let's go back to Lupe Contreras. Este duelo, tres vueltas división peso gallo. This bout three rounds in the Bantam weight division. Los jueces son the judges are Ricardo Celis, Vicente Rodriguez, y James Lazaro. Y ahora. Damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido del tricolor estadounidense rojo, azul y blanco. Introducing the blue corner, wearing the colors of the USA, red, white and blue. Su peso oficial, 135 libras y media. His official weight, 135 and one half pounds. Entra por sexta ocasión a la jaula con tres victorias y dos derrotas. He enters la jaula for the sixth time as a pro with three victories against two losses. Fighting out of San Francisco, California. El Gallo, Ulises Molina. Su rival en la esquina roja, vestido de verde. His opponent in the red corner wearing green. Marcó un peso oficial de 137 libras y un cuarto. He registered an official 137 and one quarter pounds. En su octavo combate, con tres victorias y cuatro derrotas, he enters la jaula for the eighth time as a pro, with three victories against four losses. Puro Chicali, Baja California, México. Ramón, Wild Boy Vizcarra. 
el referee internacional, Raúl Porrata. Referee Internacional Raúl Borata y su bigote. So Raúl, earlier today, with a great Tommy Santana, as we're ready for our first fight. USA versus Mexico, Ulysses Molina in white. Ramón Vizcada, who again has been a wonderful servant here for combate. He has taken some tough defeats, but he's always game, and it seems always capable of winning the fight, rarely outclassed, and he feels very confident coming into this one. Yeah, Vizcara just feeling out the pace, being the more aggressor from the start. Molina just testing it out. And Thunder, you know, especially very young in your career, you know, sometimes you could start out really fast, that gasses you out, or you can play the patient game and really just strategize where you're going to connect. Yeah, I think in, in this case, Molina is doing that because uh, the wild, the wild boy Vizcarra, he, he just came just with, with the left, 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 just to test him and kick. So, um, and he continues to do that. Is left, left, kick, left, left, just you know, seeing where he's going, and then Molina sees an opening and he he gets it. He's got it with that uh, four-inch reach advantage, so using that to his favorite. And early on being active, although big right hand coming over the top Ooh. from Molina. Just fall. Well, Molina just fall trying to get on the... This kind of needs to be cautious here. Maybe triangle kind of cooking upstairs. He's got to slip out. of that arm. Risk control arm. for the arm bar. Yes, we saw that last week, guys. As now as we're seeing, now scrambling, transitioning from Molina. Very patient. Viscata. What we can do here, Thunder, is perhaps right from that position, spin around. Because you never want to be the person that's giving the back. No, not at all. Viscata will have the advantage. And there he is. Oh, oh, he got blocked there by Molina. Good way. And now scrambling and now taking down his opponent. But he's locked into a guillotine, perhaps. Oh, he's got it well in there. Molina's looking for some breathing room. Unable to slip out. Viscata's very good in the submission game. Has two oh. submission victories. Drops him from the top floor, though. And, and people think that by slamming him is a big deal. That takes away a lot from you. Really now, look at this. He hasn't really tied in there, Thunder and Max. Molina could be in trouble. Molina looks like he might slip out too, although he's been in that he hole might, for a while. He, he might go to sleep. Yeah, probably. He might go to sleep, folks. Still alert. Still yes. alert. And he can't get a five arrow energy right here at this point. <laughs> no, I mean, he's trying his best. He's moving his, his long torso well, trying to get he might out. Be out. He has, he has, Vizcara has that Both. leg on the side that's not really allowing him to move and switch to the side and he can't even grab. He's out. He's out. He's out. Oh. Wow. Ramon Vizcara locked it wow. in. Molina said he didn't tap, and he's a little concerned, but certainly no, that good. squeeze was on. Good good on Raul Porrata for stepping in because Molina seemed like he was going to go to sleep. Molina's face was just like his hair color. <laughs> good. It tends to be between purple and pink, but I mean, when you're in that position, man, from the front face like going into that, you know he was in trouble. As you like to say, Thunder Rosa, a little bronceado. <laughs> <laughs> But look, yeah. it may not have been all the way in, Rodolfo, but he well, had it in. The, he had it on for so long, and he kept turning in, in and he yes. he thought that that was benefiting, but no, it was the opposite. It was impacting. You know, the worst part was himself when, out. Yes, <laughs> the worst part was when he kind of could have get get it out before he slammed him the second time, because when he turned around. When it, it, was right around leg, it, yeah. it was that right leg that Viscata put in there that prohibited him from to keep yes. turning it, and he couldn't use his hands because nope. the other hand was stuck. So he can't have been able to peel that 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 hand on his throat. So we're as looking we at see, he slams him once. Once he's on, he's back. Yep. That was it. Yeah, good way there, Viscata putting that leg, wrapping it apart, and see Molina was in a position where he literally cannot do anything other than use that left hand to to peel it. But even there, he was in a tough yeah. position. What a great moment for Ramon Viscata. He's just 26. So he's just getting started in this, but he had some rough losses. Now he's got a win and the world is his oyster. We'll get the official decision when we return. El referee Raúl Porrata para la contienda con un tiempo oficial de 2 minutos 25 segundos del primer episodio. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Raúl Porrata steps in and calls the halt to this contest with an official time of 2 minutes 25 seconds of round number 1. Your winner, by way of technical submission, el vencedor por sumisión técnica, Ramón, Wild Boy, Vizcarra.
the great tradition of fighters from Mexicali, and what a moment for Vizcara. Molina was no slouch. Seven and two in his amateur ranks, had come in winning three of his last four as a pro. But that all stops. Ramon Vizcara on the up and up. Take a quick break. Much more action, mucho más, here on Combate Global for our worldwide audience, and here on Paramount+. Plus. We'll face off with Israel Gonzalez. First of all, we look back at this, and Ramon Vizcara, first time we saw him inside the Jaula was February 2019. He fought Ernesto Ibarra. I mean, he's fought some good names in this, in our company. And a guy who could fight, move at 125, 135, and here it is, Thunder Rosa. The slam couldn't get him loose. He had that locked in for a good minute and a half. Yeah, that was a little scary. As soon as I saw it, I was like, he is in trouble. And he got more in trouble when his back was against the floor and the legs of Vizcar were around him. But you see how Raul touched that arm of Molina to check if he yes. responded. He, it, I know I hate to do this, but it reminds me of pro wrestling when <laughs> yes. they do the 10 count. But <laughs> yes. you know, if you don't have it up, that means it's your goal, right? Yes, the match yes, is yes, over. Yes. But here in MMA, it's a different story. We don't have to wait for the 10 count. No, Just yes. one touch of the arm will let you know if the guy's awake or if he's asleep. And, and the referee did that right thing, honestly. So congratulations to Mr. Wild Ball Vizcarra. And Molina, you can see it in his eyes. And Vizcarra, very level-headed. Got his arm raised, congratulated Molina for a good fight, congratulated the corner, and he's up and running. You, you figured this was a big win for him, but you couldn't really tell by the body language. But that's what he is, he's a true pro. We look forward to seeing him again inside the Jaula very soon. Mi nombre es Cristian Barraza Vázquez y vengo de Santiago de Chile. De profesión soy entrenador. Yo estudié eso en Chile, en mi casa, y me titulé de eso. Me interesa mucho el mundo, se complementa con lo que hacemos, ¿no? Si te debo decir la verdad, me peso a diario, dos o tres veces en el día, como algo y me vuelvo a pesar, como algo y me vuelvo a pesar, antes de dormir me peso y al despertar me peso, y está siempre controlándolo. Es como que si te relajas un poco, te puedes escapar de, de lo que estás, hacia dónde vas, que es dar la categoría. Pues sí, dicen que se aprende más de una derrota, es cierto, eh, parece cliché, pero es así porque uno mm, hace una introspección un poco más intensa, eh, por qué me pasó, eh, qué no hice bien, ah, recuerdo ese momento, cometí ese error, y, y, lo que, y a lo que te impulsa es que si quieres volver a hacerlo, tienes que entrenar mucho más, tienes que arriesgar un poco más, hacer algo diferente. ¿Qué va a ver el público de mí esta noche? Eh, la verdad que a un Scorpio Barraza 2.0, <risa> Y creo que la deuda más grande que tengo es conmigo mismo. Eh, en el trabajo de visualizar lo que va a suceder en la noche del combate, que es esta, <ríe> es el cómo quieres verte después de la pelea. Esta semana, que es la semana de pelea, fue donde yo, yo sentí la plenitud de que sí lo voy a hacer. Y de que, de que me imaginé celebrando al cielo. Eh, son muchas cosas, es muy emocional, pero es eso. Back inside La Jaula, and we will continue our coverage. It is Dee Begley and Chantel Coates coming up next. Let's get ready for all the action, and Lupe Contreras. Chantel Coates. Chantel Coates, kickboxing background, training at Glory MMA. Uh, it's got a lot of good fighters in there. Great young lady, and you know, she has a great story. How, by the way, she serves in our armed forces, so thank you so much for that. Uh, but she, she's a wrestling coach, and she's very proud uh, of coaching her son. How cool is that? Uh, in her whole high school that she went to. I mean, that's a beautiful story in itself, Thunder. I mean, I coach my own son in professional wrestling. I can I tell you, when you have uh, your offspring, you know, doing something that you love too, it's, it's beautiful. Big, big spot for Chantel Coach. You'll Su get ready. Oponente, D. Begley. It's D. Begley. Also a black belt in kickboxing, blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, training out of SPG Ireland, which gets more and more fighters into the bloodstream here in Combate and all over the world. Obviously, the, uh, the launching point for Conor McGregor. And you have a personality like Conor McGregor in these. Trainers like John Kavanaugh, it it gets 
gets the interest up, and before you know it, you'll, you'll lightning could strike again. This young lady has been getting a lot of attention. I know a lot of our Irish fans are saying, we want to see D in action. Well, you're seeing it here tonight. This lady has a great background in kickboxing, but she has now incorporated the rest of the martial arts, what makes her a well-rounded fighter. Thunder, I think this is going to be a good one for her. Well, let's, let's see. This is the head-to-head. -head. Chantel Coates, at eight years the senior, one inch via the height, four inches via the reach. We are at a catch weight of 130 pounds. Both these fighters likely to project at 135 pounds the bantamweight, but the possibility of getting in at 125. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Tres vueltas a un peso pactado a 130 libras. We continue with much more action this bout at a catch weight of 130 pounds. Those places on the judges are Eliseo Rodriguez, Dorian Mirasola, y Ricardo Celis. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestida de negro, presenting the blue corner, wearing black, su peso oficial, 131 libras y media, or official weight, 131 and one half pounds. Con un record profesional de dos victorias y una derrota with a professional record of two victories against one lone defeat. Fighting out of Overland Park, Kansas, Chantal Killer Coach. En la esquina opuesta, in the opposite corner, vestida de blanco, wearing white, su peso oficial, 130 libras, her official weight, 130 pounds. En su tercer combate a nivel profesional, con una victoria y una derrota, she enters la jaula for the third time as a professional, with one victory and one defeat, hailing from Cork, and fighting out of Dublin, Ireland, Despicable D. Begley. El referee. Raul Porrata. To the center. Raul the Porrata, center. the third inside La Jaula. Obey my commands at all times and protect yourselves at all times. Obedezcan mis órdenes y protesten en todos tiempos. Touch gloves now again, if you wish. Back to your corners. D. Begley, Chantel you ready? Coates. Ready? In the ever growing yes. women's Fight. ranks, couple weight classes in the crosshairs here. It is Begley in white. Well, as we can see, we continue to bring more international talent, which is awesome to see. We would say versus Ireland, and with both a strong kickboxing background, you would expect, Rolo, for this to stay on the feet. For the most part, look at the right there, dressed straight up, kickboxing kicks right from the start. But she feels very confident. She says she's been able to now practice the ground game. And she's facing a wrestler. You know, Colts has that background in wrestling. Let's see if he tests her out. But no doubt here in Thunder, again, if you're very confident in one aspect of martial arts, you're going to stick to it. But if you've been working on it, in, in, in especially in the camp, yes. this is your opportunity to display it and see what you're all about. Yeah, and we're, we're going to see with um, with Miss Goats. I mean, uh, she's very comfortable wrestling, but now, as you can see, she's just like measuring to see where she's going to go. She's going to change levels, uh, how she's going to react. And because uh, Begley has a lot of experience in kickboxing, she wants to make sure she doesn't get caught with a kick or, or something Ooh. else. Look at that. Right hand or left from Coates. Hating D. Cuts in on the inside leg, and D Begley pulls out, catches her upstairs. Kickboxing prowess on display early days. Coates in the National Guard, serving in the 129th A Battery in Albany, Missouri. Great start right here, just te testing it out, feeling it out. And usually when you see a kickboxing or Muay Thai fight, it's just that quickness yes. back and forth. But when you apply that into MMA, it changes the whole aspect because you can't really pull that off because there's so many arts that could come into play in a fight. Yeah, well, like we were speaking earlier, you know, is the stance is very important. If you have a certain type of stand, they can take you down. If you have, a, if you try to do something, you can fall. So it's, it's very important that you always are ready to do anything and to defend anything that's coming your way. Coach catching on that lead leg, applying that pressure. Here you go, she catch leg, try to do a back fist. Right, and, and Coach there could have capitalized in grabbing onto that leg, and he could, he could shoot shoot yes. for a single leg takedown, but D just started using the hand to distract her, and she's like, give me back my leg. Man, that's the most annoying thing that somebody can do. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that fist on your face, that was nice. 
Great kicking there from, from D. Still testing it out, feeling the pace. Look at him, contact on these strikes here from Begley. There's been a mixed bag in this early first round. Yeah. Scott, Scott, you see, I don't know if you noticed, Scott is reacting to any feints that uh, uh, Begley's doing. Yeah. And I, I think that's what she's measuring. Begley's measuring when is her time to come in. You know, faint, 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 boom. You know, she, so she, so. I was just about to tell you that. And oh. usually they take, usually, you know, <laughs> as a, it, it, it moves you, but the smart fighter doesn't flinch. <laughs> exactly. I think, I think uh, Coates is a little nervous in, in that, in that aspect. But she is working that inside kick. Hey, if you're working enough, you know what's going to happen. Yeah, Begley applying the pressure and continuing to do so and take the center of the howler in the process. I think here the, the first lady that changes levels is, is going to switch to gears in this fight. Oh, oh nice great overhand. overhand, yeah. Those that woke her up. <laughs> and you woke. They definitely would have waking me up. I would have felt that. Oh. But look at, look at Chantel's stance. She's very up. So if she were to strike from this level, it's, it's, it's really, she's going to be off balance. Yeah, she is. Because she's not going to be punching from the hip. She's going to be punching from the shoulders. Therefore, that torso, all that lower extremities, is just going to be vulnerable. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, right now I'm just like looking at her, her arms is wide open, you know, it's just, just trying to see. And just, it will take one strike if he, she's like, there you go. Better there from Coates, but trying to even the keel, but still being a bit of a punching bag early on. Yeah, Chantel needs to come down just a little bit more on her stance. She's standing up way too much. I mean, uppercuts, it's all there. Yes. All D has to oh, just yes. come in right there linearly and just boom, boom, uppercut right open for you. What do you think is her strategy at this point when she's she's doing this kind of stuff? Or this is just like how she's been fighting for a long time? You know, because sometimes you do certain things for on purpose. You mean D? D. Yeah, I, I think he's just trying to, you see how that opening, a cold, I mean, it, it's right there. I think he's just trying to cut her in, move inside, and just work the pocket. She got another. Um, but every time the cold, that D comes in, obviously, she plays very safe. Yes. Reaching the end of this first round, and D Begley with the upper hand. Chantel Coates, though, not going anywhere. We'll be back with round number two. Ah! Good start here from the, the Irish woman, Begley. And we saw the kickboxing on display. Yeah, it was, it's here all day. Straight up kickboxing, beautiful kick work there from D. Colts being very cautious, Thunder. Uh, great fun. overhand right, but she she's being too cautious. Yes, and like I said, she was ca catching uh, B with all those overhand rights, but she was leaving a lot of openings, and she was getting kicked in the head, kicked in the neck, so it's a little dangerous, like how, you know, her stance is at some point, or, or defense. right there. I would like to see him take the control of the cage a little bit more. Yeah, okay. I see the more corner body. telling her you need to take more control of it. Maybe a more boy. Maybe a boy. bit timid there, okay. Coach, but got some intel now after the first five minutes inside the Haula. Ready, ready, action! Back here, round number two, Chantel Coates. Going to bridge the gap here after a pretty impressive start from Didi Begley. Went seven to three as an Affiner amateur, bronze medal in the IMMAF World Championships. That was back in 2018. So I'll be curious to see if Colts is going to try to do a takedown in this second round. At the, yeah, at this point you should. You, you got to change the the route of the fight. Primarily, what well, that the first one was purely on on the feet and. If you're bread and butter, you're confident in your wrestling, why not do it? Yeah. Push, push, push but, the trigger. But again, she's keeping a very simple right, uh, right, left, right. And she's she's connecting a lot of the times, right? But yeah, I, I will say, if you don't see, if you don't see you know, nothing, I'll if, go for it. If you don't go for a knockout, you're not gonna impress, or a submission, you're not gonna impress the judges with what you're doing right now. Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely right. A little better from Coates, but if she catches one on the way in. Now, yeah, needs to be uh, D needs to be cautious. See how she threw in that left hand, yes. leaving her exposing that chin. You, you know, she overreached. Yes, uh. yes. And uh, you notice what B is like going down a little bit and trying to get right. the punch. Right. Like we were talking about, like little upper uppercut. So it's more like you have to set it up. That's why it's helpful to throw in that first jab to test oh, it up. Beautiful little question mark kick. kick. Man, I've been trying to do that question mark. That <laughs> Those looks are hard. I can't get it. I can't get Those it. Those are very hard, How man. much time do you put into it? 
How much uh, at daily time at the at the gym? Hundreds Not and hundreds enough. of times. <laughs> and I just still can't get it. <laughs> Question mark kick works earlier. And again, she uh, quotes is leading up a huge opening, and she's getting hit every time she's doing it. Uh, B is doing the, the question a, mark kick. She's been a stationary target. Yeah. And Begley has to be a little more impactful, but has to be happy about the strike rate. Now the clinch break there. She does have that wizard. Yeah. If, if she can, she can definitely take her down. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right here is clearly opening for Chantal to change the levels right in that. Well, she had it right there in that clinch work just to... Lift right. up the soldiers, the, the shoulders, and bring go down to the straight to the floor. Got the headlock. Something from Chantel Coates caught Begley on the way out with that right hand. Measuring again. B. Tip kick. Yeah, Chantel is just waiting. Just, she's just banking on one shot. That's what she's really leaning on. That is very dangerous, right. though. She came right in again without striking, and lucky not to. Get a, a, a stamp on the way out. I, I think there's definitely, a, there's been so many openings. Oh! Bagley now Overhand. with her better, best strike of the fight. But, but look at Chantel, her head is wide open, chin's not down. I noticed it's that too, open. I wanted to say that yeah. earlier. But I, that's what I told you, is this like a, something that she's been working on? or? or like so what, what does Begley have to do here because Chantel Coates is leaving herself open? She can do it like literally anything because she's not even they tuck in her chin. If you get a really good shot and there is no actual defense, now she defended it. Do you notice? <laughs> well, look, Chantel's giving you that lead leg. I will start by hitting that lead leg because she leaves wide open to break her down and then follow up for punches. Oh, oh, this is dangerous. Got some opportunities for knees here as well. There yeah, it is. There it is. It seems like Miss Coles is getting a little tired. And, uh, well, Coates may want to lead into the wrestling. She's a women's wrestling coach at Leavenworth right. High School, as we touched on. What she's defending right now against the cage. She's going for the knees. Yeah, you can do this. Deke is a prize coach here. And, yeah. And change the levels and, and go for the yes, takedown. Yes, I, I think she is. She's going. She's trying to break yeah. it down the leg. There you go. But Colts has been able to defend it. But she is. Colts is also using a hala to yes. uh, that's for support. Oh, there oh, it is. There it is. Takedown. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She needs to keep moving in. Again, La Hala's in the way, so that's not going to give her that opportunity to completely bring her down, because she could support herself. And she has all her experience defending right. takedowns, as right. we see. She just push, right. push her down. That's very simple. as what they, 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 they you remember when you were against La Hala? You push them down until they let it go. Mm -hmm. Still fighting hard, getting the underhook now into the, uh, the midsection. Is Begley trying something different? And you can see Colt defending. She has one arm. Holding the arm so she doesn't get punched as she's defending this, and, and you know, uh, B is has her head Work. against her body, yeah. trying to go for a takedown again. She tried to go for a more like a judo throw, yeah. but it was kind of sloppy there. <laughs> Those are hard to do, especially yeah. when somebody else is like that strong. Right. And it, that you have to be very precise and just go for it. <laughs> it's a quick reaction. Seconds. Yes. This is the end of the second round. Begley's got the upper hand, but can she finish the job? Round three coming your way next. So, Begley, it would appear, Rodolfo, with uh, the upper hand in the first two rounds, which puts her in a unique situation. But Chantel Coates, with the right coaching, certainly they would look for something to to be a little, to provide a little more impact here in round three. Yeah, just looking back at some of the highlights from that second round, she did connect with that left. And uh, D is just striking away. She did a tense up takedown. Uh, but the Thunder, D has some power. She has some power in those hands and those kicks. She could potentially knock out Colt, but Colt needs to capitalize on her wrestling. She hasn't really done anything. It was actually D who attempted the takedown. Yes, and as you see, at the very end of the, the round, B was the one who's trying to do a single. Let's go. That's it. Let's go around. One of those again, girl. Let's do Getting ready here for round three. There is D. Ready. Begley. Ready. Coming in from Ireland out of the SBG camp, finding Chantel Coates. Thunder Rosa, Chantel Coates has got to find something to hang her hat on. Whether it's going to lead to victory or not, something that can work because nothing has thus far. I think she, she needs to go back to, to wrestling. 
because like uh, she hasn't been able to find that shot that she's looking for, and we know that she's strong on, on her on her wrestling abilities. And she's got to go for it here, Rolo Full, because if she wants to win, it's going to require something significant in this third round. Well, Coles did land that shot that Dee did not check in her legs, uh, but she 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 just has to be. She can't put it on neutral. She has to nope. go and drive. No, nope. no, she cannot. And again, that stance. And you know another thing, she's not exiting when she's doing her combos. And that's, again, it, it, like I said, um, you're just a target right there. Should be one, two, move. One, two, three, four, move. Yes. Angle. Oof. Beautiful quick again. She, she's been landing those oh, things all this That's time, better from Coates, and it's, it's not the sharp Begley that we saw in the first two rounds. Looks a little, a little tired. Ooh. Leather on leather there. There you go. She has, she has the hooks in there. She should try just to take her down, change levels. Both these ladies have attempted overhand right hands. <laughs> yes. They're fun to do, I'm not going to lie. They're not fun to take, but they're Roy, fun to do. Roy oh. Nelson had a successful career knocking out people with that right hand. Yeah. Little combination there from Coates. Certainly got Begley's attention. Moving to her right, trying to get a better avenue for those strikes. Playing the angles. Let's see, I'm like, now I'm moving. There we go. Now it's a little footwork from D. She's got, and, and Coach has got the good footwork too. Ooh. Good, firm right hand from Begley. And, and two, when sir, you're, you're so used to a stance, whether it be kickboxing, boxing, and yes. then applying it into MMA, you know, we're, we're, we're just so used to habits. We're so used to training a certain way and then to apply that into when you become a well-rounded fighter, it, it takes a little bit of time to adjust. Yeah, and you have to retrain your body, you have to retrain your brain, and, and just get out of the habits, right? So they were, again, all against the the Howla, but they uh, B was not able to to finish a takedown. Oh. Now some busted, blood yeah. trinkling down the left eye of Coates. Well, she's taking a lot of shelf oh. landing. Back fist, actually, B likes to do a back, back fist. is one of her favorite moves. Well, Coates has got the back now. Uh oh. Two minutes 30 to work with. Yeah, but D quickly transitioned, ripped those that grip to turn it and then get into the clinch. She's been pretty good at defending. I don't know if there's a submission there's game a for Coates as they go down, and the high ground belongs to Begley. Well, let's see, but look, look, look at Coates. Here she has that, that le well, she had that left arm, now she let it go. She's in half guard right now, and she's just defending as much as possible. And she's shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. She's trying to shimmy all the way to the, the hell. Or, like, they might have, have a submission out. here. Coates flushes it out. Oh. Oh. Into the guard. Everybody's favorite, the guillotina. <laughs> the guillotine. I don't know if uh, Begley's got uh -oh. much of it, no, but doesn't. Coates does have to pivot, and her blood is starting to turn Begley's top red. As it's just spilling. She almost, she's almost using it to wipe away the blood from her vision. <laughs> yes. Resourceful to the least. So Begley let, let go of the guillotine, and now she's trying to do another maneuver. She went back. She's going back. They continue to move. That that's just just. She's trying to get leverage on the on the howl if, if she yeah, wants but, to strike, but Chantel, right? Chantel, Chantel, she's just oh. pure wrestling and putting all her body weight on her now. Oh, to move yes, they now. had to stop oh, right now because she, knee. as she Is was getting knee? out, yeah, she need her on the face. Goes knee, knee on the face. You to a corner. You to a corner, right there. Yeah, referee just stopped that there for the knee. Uh oh. You need it down upon it. And I see she does have that one knee on the floor, and then Chantel didn't see. But to the, to, to, on, the, on the defense here for Chantel, she couldn't see for that position if Dee's knee was on the floor. It was hard. It was, it was a tough situation where she was in. Yes, it was. Definitely it was. Chantel couldn't see from that area. Her, 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 she was locked almost in the guillotine. So she can't, she can't really tell from that uh, to a certain degree, right? Yes. Let's see, Time, let's see, see one more time. Time in. Ready, right. ready, fight. Yeah, Raul Poratas, I'm not even arguing about it. You can't do it. Another overhand right. Let's see if that did any damage, though. There's still some time left in this last round. Go for the wizard. She's Corner of Begley trying to get her to move. Close to defending as much as possible. Punches. Now, I don't know if Chantel thinks that she's winning this because of that clinch work or... No, she moved. Or that control that she had for the for a short bit on the floor, but 
I don't know. I don't know, man. It's, she's she's really trying to get that right. that knockout. Right. right now, at this point, you have to. Coates looking pretty fit, but there's nothing behind those punches. Not a little bit more behind Begley's. Just a little bit more. A little bit more, not a whole <laughs> lot. But this is the third round, and it's getting leggy in there. Oh man, this is like this is the most dangerous part because a lot of the times you're so tired, you start getting a little sloppy. Yeah, well, Begley with some wild misses. They're just trying to score at this point. Let's see. Coach fi fighting like a champ at the end. That is where it will run its course. D. Begley, an incredible first round and cruised a bit in the next two rounds, but it looks like it's more than enough to get the victory this evening. A multiple world and European champion in kickboxing, D. Begley. I think she feels very confident that she has a fight. Um, I mean, I think both feel like that, that, that they both won, but we, we will see the last, this last round was interesting. Because they were, were trying shots, but There's they were- good ones from Coates. Yeah, but at the very, at the very end, there was like not a lot of power yeah. behind their, their shots. And we see another attempting for a takedown, and some knees from D into Coates, and Coates continue to defend. Nice overhand right into Coates' face. Another beat, another overhand, and you see her, you see Coates bleeding a little bit from, from the face. I'm sure they'll look back at some of the tapes, learn some of the things that they can improve on. Good stuff from these ladies though from inside La Hala. Let's go to Lupe Contreras for the officials. Los jueces entregan tarjetas idénticas de 29 a 28. All three judges turn in identical scores of 29 to 28 in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision a favor de la ganadora por decisión unánime. From Ireland, yeah! despicable D. D. Bagley with the unanimous decision and getting the W. Chantel Coates with a foundation to set and things to work on. But clearly the striking just better. For the Irish woman, congratulations to her. Much more action coming your way here on Paramount Plus. Back here inside La Jaula, it is gonna be Jair Lozano and Eric Mendez next. Making his debut, Lozano, against Mendez, who's also in the same boat. So two kids getting it going next. You always like that because maybe one of these guys become the next big thing. We'll find out here next on Combate Global. Making debut is always a big deal. It you, is a huge you deal. You remember your MMA debut, uh, Thunder Rosa. It is a huge deal, man. You are so nervous. You want to impress everyone. You want to impress your friends, your family, everyone. Let's go to Lupe Contreras for the particulars. Entrando a la jaula, Yair Lozano. Yair Lozano, he says he's excited about this day. Why wouldn't he be? Learned about the uh, sport while flipping channels. How many times do you hear that story? <laughs> And then he fell in love training with the Lions Alpha team there in Monterrey, Nuevo Leon, which is uh, one of the big hotbeds in Mexico. Top hotbed. You've seen some of those talents have displayed some of their great work here, Thunder, and there's no doubt that this man is going to carry some bricks in those hands and he's going to test this youngster, Eric Mendez, inside La Jala. That's so exciting, man. It is exciting. I hear Lozano. Looking to keep the rich tradition of Monterrey mixed martial arts live and running as we go back Su to Lupe Contreras. Eric Mendez. Eric Mendez. Big fan of the Tony Ferguson Kevin Lee fight. Blue belt in jujitsu, and he is at the Warrior Camp, where also a lot of great mixed martial artists have come out of. 
And you see the man right behind him, that's Pablo Alfonso, has trained some of the great. He also competed uh, in Florida and all over the country. Had a illustrious career in mixed martial arts at the pro, but now he's dedicated. He left South Florida, all right? He left South Florida to move up north and help out the team up uh, in Warrior Camp and is finding out some great young talent that we have seen here inside Mahala and uh, tra trained to the likes of the Josh Reddinghouse and so many others that we've seen compete uh, in the world of, the, of uh, MMA. This is a, a delayed fight and we're really going to focus in here on Mendez who is a guy that uh, uh, is coming with a very a high IQ in his fight game, a, a guy that has a lot of the tools, certainly at the tender age of 23. This was supposed to be 135, Mendez missing the weight. Certainly have to give up some of his purse, but still the victory is paramount. He has a two-inch reach advantage, two-inch via the height. We continue with much more action, three rounds in the Bantam weight division. Los Jueces on the judges are Vicente Rodriguez, Hector Gomez, and James Lazaro. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, vestido de negro con verde y rojo. Introduced in the blue corner, wearing black with green and red. Su peso oficial, 135 libras y tres cuartos. His official weight, 135 and three quarter pounds. Esta noche, hace su debut profesional. Dentro de la jaula de combate global tonight, he is making his professional debut. Puro Monterrey, Nuevo León, Mexico. Esquina roja, vestido de rojo con blanco en the red corner, wearing red with white. Su peso oficial, 138 libras y media. His official weight, 138 and one half pounds. Esta noche se lanza las grandes ligas en las artes marciales mixtas. Dentro de la jaula de combate global tonight, he makes the leap into the big leagues of MMA inside of la jaula de combate global. From Spokane, Washington, Eddie. Mendez, el referee, Alan Abeles. Right Alan Abeles, the right, third the inside the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch him up, go ahead. Come out, fight. Judge. 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 Fight, are you ready? Fight, are you ready? Fight. We're underway. It is. Lozano in the green and red with the black trim as well. And he's coming out throwing. Lozano's aggressive, man. I love that muscle from Mendez that pointed that out. Oh, Great hair Lozano dude. connecting. <laughs> Great hair dude from Mendez. I was just there. Yeah. A lot of good flow, a lot of good flow. <laughs> Lovely. Wish I had that hair, seriously. You can. Uh, no, no, you can't. No, I cannot. Oh! Lozano, Lozano. And now Mendez. This is a solid stand-up affair. It's a strike fest. Look at how you just sets it up. One, one, two. Oh, you're Lozano, oh, predatorial. No kick. Impactful. Oh, oh, oh. Man, Mendez oh, grabs him, takes him down. down. There's no earthquakes in Florida, but I just felt one after that kick. <laughs> 135 pounders fighting big, fighting strong. Actually, I take that back. There was a mini earthquake not long ago. They're, e or not. they're <laughs> eager. They're eager to, to kick each other's butts. I can tell you that. Ooh. Uppercut, left, right. I'm here and I threw in an uppercut. Mendez using that left jab nicely to set it up, but Lozano fires oh. back over the top. These guys are going for the head right from the start, nice. guys. I love how he catches the kick and goes for the takedown. We were talking about that, you know, in other fights in where you see the kick, you grab it, and you try to go for a takedown. Right. Mendes, Look how here. Good platform set. Great hip position. You see how he opens, pops up his hip, preventing Mendes from going down to the floor and taking him down. And it, they, they just want to keep this fight right on the feet. Oh, this is fun, guys. Look how he sets it up. He smells something, guys. He didn't want to send him up with that left with that jab. Hey, Mendes loves the jab. He said that. He, he, I mean, you said everything with a jab. That's it. Missing on the uppercut. Nice jab, Lozano. Oh, that one hurt, Lozano. Mendes, he walked oh, right into one. that. Right into it. Changing levels. Mendes is already bleeding from the nose right now. Oof. Oh, good right hand, Lozano. Mendes left himself open. 
remember, this is just cut and go. I hear it got hit in the body. Lots of love, Thunder Rosa. I hear got hit in the body, guys. I think he's still impacting. He might be playing possum. <laughs> these guys are walking. This, these guys are walking through everything. Clinch defending with that elbow Remember in the, the face. Knees. He in the body. I mean, he, if he sees that he... What he got? We'll give you oh. time the for the mouthpiece. It's the worst, man. Because nah, <laughs> you have that momentum going, and all of a sudden it stops. Oh. Because now, now your heart rate slows down. Oh, yeah, it, it just it just throws everything out of whack. Yeah, continue the carnage, guys. Right now. Wow. Mendes left. now is in. Oh, he's uh -oh. in. Oh, oh, mouthpiece yeah. again. This time he can't stop it. Alan Abelis. Without mouthpiece, guys. Yeah, it's not dangerous good. Dangerous position. Super dangerous position. Has to be cautious, and now Jair's in a deep position here. Men is just continuously layering in this flurries of punches. Mendes is wild, guys. Oh, but some of those punches connect. <laughs> no, they they're, they're, they're Every very compact and, and direct. They, and they all come with power. This is not even for setup. He's going for oh. knockout. And oh, right here, guys. Oh, no. This may be it. Big one. Elbow. So, out of the seat. Over. Oh. Alan Avila stops the fight. Mendez, an absolute terror. Wow. Wow. <laughs> like, we, just, like we said in the Norte, I way. Yes. I way. Yes. <laughs> this was one of those. That's tough for Lozano. He started off great. He was still standing before Avila stopped the fight. Didn't have his mouthpiece in. I don't know how much of a role that played. Uh, I think it just kind of like took him out of of the of the rhythm, like we were talking earlier. Wow, Jeez. good stuff for men. It's a great debut for that young man. They both did great. Great strike fast, and let's take a look at this replay. It's just right from it was like a car wreck, just non-stop, hard-hitting action, great fist combination. Men is really picking and choosing, but of the two thunder, I would say that Mendes was just more precise how he yes. was a little bit wild yes and another thing when he was doing when he was doing his combinations he, he was doing exiting more more of a head movement on and some of the um instances and when he was able to capitalize it he did he didn't hold anything back yeah every time the men look at the referee's camera every time he'll throw in that shot he'll kind of shift a little bit move to the side and here he just picked and chose where he wanted to strike Jair lozano unfortunately taste defeat and Eric Mendes, he takes victory alongside his coach here, Pablo Alfonso. That's a happy coach right there. Good comeback, too, as the pressure was being throttled by Lozano, but Mendes was patient, able. I can't wait to see him fight again. Oh, I, I, I'm excited. And can we get this guy some, some shampoo? I mean, this, no, this, guy got, <laughs> this guy got a commercial shampoo. Great no, stuff, great hairdo. That, that hair's hair great. Had another color. Huh. Same, same haircut. Color for the next one, red or green? Yeah, this or... guy gotta support some like support the shampoo. All kidding great aside, stuff, man. But that is it's hard because that hair gets yes. in your eyes, especially yes. when you're you're in a fight like this. It, it, you know, and, and funny you mentioned that thunder. You know, as women, with, 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 yes. you know, have the long hair. You have to get the dreadlocks. He just he doesn't want no dreadlocks. No. I'm coming in with the hair. No, 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 not at all. He looks. He looks and like... especially when you're in the ground, it becomes obnoxious because it gets in your eyes. You oh, can't God, see. Oh God, it's the worst. Yeah. It's the worst. But he has, you know, like copete, you know. <laughs> So he knows what he's doing with that hairstyle. Eric Mendes awesome. fighting out of Spokane, producing some real good talent. Great stuff from this young man. And again, in Combate Global, you keep an eye on some of these fighters because you don't know the trajectory they can get on as we go to Lupe. El referee Alan Abeles entiende el combate con un tiempo oficial de 3 minutos 14 segundos del primer episodio. Referee Alan Abeles calls a halt to the action with an official time of 3 minutes 14 seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of TKO, el vencedor por knockout técnico, en su debut profesional, Eric Mendes. Big smile there for Mendez. He is off and running 1-0 in his MMA career. We'll take a quick break, and then we will get ready for the main card. Top of the hour. All the action coming your way. Ismael Zamora Martinez. Tengo 22 años y soy originario de la Ciudad de México. 
he peleado con rivales bastante fuertes y pues yo tengo mentalidad de ganador, así que voy a tratar de seguir escalando. Mi nombre es Cristian Barraza Vázquez y vengo de Santiago de Chile. Mi estrategia apunta a aprovechar mi distancia en, esta, en este caso y también mi buena pelea de piso. Yo, yo analicé su pelea, analicé su juego y creo que puedo vencerlo tanto arriba como abajo. Yo creo que voy a ganar esta pelea porque tengo mucho más hambre que él y vengo muy bien preparado, vengo muy fuerte, me siento bien, así que voy a buscar finalizar. Me siento mejor que nunca, voy a dar todo de mí, me preparé mucho, eh, creo que no dejé ningún punto al azar y te prometo que sí va a haber una buena pelea y que yo no me quiero ir de la jaula eh, con la mano abajo. Yo quiero ganar esta pelea. Ismael Zamora, one of the rising stars in Combate, just 22 years of age. He's got a rocket ship on his back. And maybe we'll see some more fireworks. A highlight finish, but you heard from Christian Barraza. He says he's feeling better than ever, even taking this fight on short notice. There is the head-to-head. -head. We are in the Bantamweight division. One-inch reach advantage for Barraza, all even on the height as we go to Lupe Contreras. Las reglas oficiales de la jaula, tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este es el duelo coestelar de esta noche en la división Peso Gallo. This is our co-featured bout of the evening in the Bantamweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are, Ricardo Celis, James Lázaro y Eliseo Rodríguez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un... Combate Global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de negro, presenting the blue corner, wearing black. Marcó un peso oficial de 136 libras. He registered an official 136 pounds. En 13 combates, mantiene un récord de 8 victorias y 5 derrotas. En 13 pro bouts, he maintains a record of 8 victories against 5 losses. Representando a Santiago de Chile, Cristian. Scorpio Barraza. Su contrario en la esquina roja, vestido de rojo, is opponent in the red corner, wearing red. Su peso oficial, 135 libras, is official weight, 135 pounds. En su quinto combate dentro de la jaula, con tres victorias y una derrota, he enters la jaula for the fifth time as a pro, with three victories against one lone defeat. De la Ciudad de México, DF. El Kraken, Ismael Zamora. El referee, Alana Vélez. Alana Vélez, the third inside La Jaula. All right, I gave you guys the instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch them up, go ahead, come out fight. Judge, judge, judge. Recent newlyweds, Gloria Bravo in the corner of Christian Barraza. Last week, Barraza was in the corner of Gloria. Bravo, we're underway, and it is Zamora in red. Great stuff here right from the start. What we need to see is Melo is a fast pace with the striking, and Barraza, though he has sharpening it up in uh, the Black Zillions with his boxing, but he's very confident on the floor. Curious to see where Ismael tries to take this. Lightning quick hands early on from Zamora, who is with the Bone Breakers, where he trains with, amongst others, David Martinez, who is the champion at bantamweight. Zamora is the fifth ranked bantamweight. Perhaps those two are on a collision course. And Thunder, watch out for those kicks from Ismael. He loves to go those side kicks, especially to the knee area. And if you connect one of those, I mean, it could be disastrous for your meniscus. Yeah, I was I was just looking, he, he was going to. Yeah, there, there it is again. Uh, this is the third time that he does it. He and loves to do that. Yeah, he's switching stands too. Just checking him out, see like, so let's see, what's up, maybe, what's up? And he goes with that kick. There you go. Combination with that doubled up left hand. Uh, he's so fast, Rodolfo. There's something, there's a feeling you get watching Zamora that something spectacular oh, no, happened free. as he took out Alan Abeles. Abeles is still down. Now he's up. He's laughing about it. <laughs> Alan Abeles, <laughs> one of the good ones. I was like, please, somebody call another one. I just feel like referee, referee, like wrestling style, just, you know? He just got out of the picture there. <laughs> well, this gets back to the action. Anything can happen. <laughs> yes, we Anything saw that. Anything can happen. 
Whoa, oh, what a oh, oh. Vanessa Zamora caught it. Look at Zamora, though. You know, he, he's he's so fast, but he's so he precise. Is. He is. Because sometimes when you when you 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 throw your hand so fast, or even kick, you tend to forget about that technique, and you leave some of those gaps. You oh, leave some of those openings, but not in this case. Now, this is Barraza where he feels very comfortable. Look where he's setting it up. He full knows guard. what he needs to search for. Yeah, I got a full guard right now. The men get, getting up, 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 up. Zamora, careful, and you can see this takes the starch out of his fight as you see Barraza almost reaching out for that yeah. leg. Yeah, I mean, see, there are two, two things are going to happen. Is that triangle or yeah, not? And, and there it is. There it is. The guy's sitting, trying to set up for the... They're going to oh. break him up. Oh, come on. Island will set it up. I'm sure Barraza Zamora here. Was, Zamora was looking up at Abeles as if yeah. to say... Yeah. I'm sure Barraza kind of gave the nod there to to Alan Abeles. Oh, oh. The hook's right there. Defending that. You, know, you can hear on the corner, he's saying, work, work the knee, work the knee, she's saying. We saw Zamora twice in the month of April. April the 8th, he beat Slick Rick Celada via sub... Mission armbar, two weeks later, knockout in the first round of George Garcia. Barraza loves to throw those. Overhand. Those overhands, yes. Barraza. Oh, oh, he yes. ran into that elbow. <laughs> but Barraza, I don't know if he had a helmet on, but he didn't even shake him at all. Thunder Rosa, Boy. it's. He's calm, he's calm. Zamora's yeah. the favorite, but you, you've got to be impressed with how Barasa's handling this and putting Zamora in peril. For yes, Sandra. I mean, he said earlier that he um, he adapts to his opponent, and he definitely has adapted in the last, you know, three minutes. And he's he's there, he's giving him war, and he said he was going to be ready for him no matter what. Barasa, six submission victories oh, in his eight out. fights. That's some respect right yeah, there. Zamora yeah, Zamora showing a real gentleman there yeah, as he yeah. allowed but Barasa. A big kick, though, a little calling card afterwards. You know, I have to give credit here to Barasa, who took this fight on day's notice. I would have never known okay. that he took this fight. It, it, well, I no, would have thought that either. this guy had a full camp. Me either. Like, he's he's in great shape. He's in great condition. He's trying to do as much as he can on defending some of his... Oh, oh, oh he's in trouble. He is not going to capitalize on it. You could see Barasa's eyes open wide as but, he was starting to get hit. Barasa needs to go to the ground. Yes. Now, he, he needs to go to the ground. One minute to go. Zamora is clinical in the striking game. Hey, he said he was going to sink every single opponent he has. That's what they call him Bar the Kraken, and he's showing that right now. Barasa is still hurt here. He work, yeah. Yeah, there he go. goes. Yeah, he has to do that, but great takedown defense yes. from Ismael. He just pro. Oh, look at that. Beautiful transition. Back. Beautiful. Barasa is just turtling Barasa's right there. Barasa's been hurt. He's been hurt since that shot, and this fight doesn't look like it's going to last Barasa's not much doing much. longer. No, not defending. Alan, I stop it. Yep. Alan Abeles stops it. Yeah. Barasa just wasn't the same after getting hit by that left hand or right hand. And Zamora with another first round TKO. And he sinks Barasa, senores, like he said he was going to do. This young man, uh, he just continues to impress and fight La Aula. <laughs> Three fight win streak in April. He had two fights back to back. Coming now here in July, putting in the works against a guy who competed in Copa Combate. Wow. The Kraken, as you said, Thunder Rosa, taking down another vessel. This time the Chilean, Christian Barraza. We'll be back. A tender moment between Christian Barraza and his wife, Gloria Bravo, both are fighters. But at the moment right now belongs to Ismael Zamora. Campbell's inside La Jaula. We're now ready for the official decision. We go inside La Jaula and Lupe Contreras. Una serie de golpes sin respuesta obliga al referee Adana Vélez a parar la contienda con un tiempo oficial de 4 minutos 28 segundos del primer episodio. A series of unanswered blows obligates referee Alana Vélez to stop this contest with an official time of 4 minutes 28 seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, el ganador por knockout técnico de México, el Kraken, Ismael. Zamora! Just 22 years of age and getting better and better. Three straight wins. The one defeat was a split decision. And Ismael Zamora came in as the number five bantamweight. He's not going any lower than that. And sure, Campbell McLaren 
who only goes inside the howl when he approves of a fight, will make sure of it. Big spot for that young man. Bone Breakers get another win. We'll return with more Combate Global. Christian Barraza looking to take a fight on short notice and pull a huge surprise off to a nice start against Ismael Zamora. But Zamora, with that incredible striking, was able to get the upper hand. He looked very confident right from the start, unfortunately. Ismael, he was just game, he was ready to go. Again, kudos for both these men, right? Because Ismo had to accept the fact that he was fighting facing Barasa on day's notice, and Barasa accepted the fight on day's notice, so my hat up to both of these gentlemen. Yes. Yeah, but Ismael, I mean, he is just unstoppable, precise, persistent, and it comes down to technique. Yes. And I think that's what really won this fight for Ismael. Technique, he was precise, he wasn't wild. All his shots that he threw were, um, were, were for a reason, and yes. that's to land. Not to take you off guard, not for a feint, but to hit. And then to just top it off at the end of the fight here, referee Alan Abella just saw too much, called the fight. Barasa just couldn't do anything. Yeah, that was that was a little sad for for Barasa, but you know it is it is what it is in this game. Lots of output there with 60 punches in total, very accurate. You know he is precise. He kept it very compact and direct. And Christian Barasa, we'll hear from him again. He's been a tremendous fighter for Combate. He's not afraid of anyone, and he has fought Trevor Wells, which was his fight in April. He fought Franz Mlambo, number one ranked man in weight. Now he's fought the number five. Uh, don't rule against him. But the story really is Samoda. He is a rising force, and you wonder what those conversations at Bone Breakers are with regards to David Martinez, because maybe that happens soon. Enzo Perez and Luis Chavez. Perez started at five years old training karate and taekwondo. A wrestler training out of extreme couture. Feels like he's a name that you better get used to. If he can beat Luis Chavez, we'll learn the name. Let's get to know the Cuban bantamweight who will be fighting next. Empecé a practicar MMA desde los cinco años. Empecé con karate, taekwondo, boxeo. Luego eh, empecé a entrenar lucha, jiu-jitsu, muay thai. Y decidí hacerme profesional y hoy estamos aquí. Representar a Cuba para mí es una gran responsabilidad, ya que tengo que dar un gran ejemplo para la nueva generación. Eh, 100% soy dos personas diferentes de afuera cuando estoy con mi familia, mis amistades, amable, cariñoso. Dentro de la jaula no hay amor. Eh, sí creo que voy a ganar esta pelea. Eh, hemos, yo y mi equipo hemos trabajado y nos hemos preparado mucho y confío que el resultado va a ser una victoria. Not wasting any time. Losing the flag on the way in is Enzo Perez. He's won two of his first three fights. Brief amateur career. This is a guy we, we're gonna know a lot more after what we see coming up next in La Jaula. The same way he walks into La Jaula is the same way he likes to fight his start. Doesn't even skip a beat. Right from the start, very aggressive, very explosive. Let's see if that's his strategy to start this fight right now. Luis Chavez, his opponent. Let's get to know him. Lo que hace que los peleadores de México destaquemos definitivamente es el corazón. Somos aguerridos, no nos hacemos para atrás ni un centímetro nunca. 
Y lo que más diferente a otros oponentes es mi compromiso. Estoy comprometido con mi carrera y con la gente que me apoya. Eh, mi sumisión o movimiento favorito, su misión es Mataleón. He ganado mis últimas dos pelas por, por la misma vía y definitivamente eh, el uppercut es de mis golpes favoritos. Lichi Chávez. Vengo con todo el corazón listo para la jaula. Eh, vamos a dar una muy buena, muy buena pelea y espero que, que se prepare la guerra que le voy a dar. Luis Chavez looks absolutely locked in for this fight. The 28-year-old uh, in tremendous shape. He practices CrossFit, purple belt in Jiu-Jitsu, and coming in with two rear naked choke victories to start off his MMA career. And he looks jacked, guys. This guy's ready to go. He's been taking some seminars from some of the greats champions such as the uh, Brandon Morenos and so many great athletes. This guy's a game fighter, very patient. It's on the contrast compared to Enzo who comes in right from the far, very, very explosive. So this is a positive and a negative going at it inside La Jaula. Head to head, Chavez three years older. Enzo Perez with a massive height advantage and also five inch via the reach. We're in the Bantam weight division. Both guys hitting the spot. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Este es el duelo estelar de esta noche. Tres vueltas, división peso gallo. This is the main event, three rounds. In the Bantamweight division, los jueces son, the judges are Vicente Rodriguez, James Lázaro y Eliseo Rodriguez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de rojo, blanco y azul, introducing the blue corner, wearing red, white and blue. Marcó un peso oficial de 134 libras y tres cuartos. He registered an official 134 and three quarter pounds. En su cuarto combate a nivel profesional, con dos victorias y una derrota. He enters la jaula for the fourth time as a pro, with two victories against one defeat. Entrenando en Las Vegas, Nevada, y representando a su tierra natal de La Habana, Cuba. Enzo, New Religion, Pérez. Su contrario en la esquina roja, vestido del tricolor mexicano, verde, blanco y rojo. His opponent in the red corner, wearing the colors of Mexico, green, white and red. His official weight, 135 pounds. Su peso oficial, 135 libras. Esta noche, entra a la jaula buscando mantener su récord invicto de dos victorias. Tonight, he enters La Jaula looking to remain undefeated with two victories. De Chihuahua, Chihuahua, Mexico. Luis Fernando Elichi Chávez. El referee internacional, Raúl Porrata. Raúl Porrata, the third inside La Jaula. Pueden dejar mis órdenes y proceden en dos momentos. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Token wanted. Back to your corner. Here is Luis Chavez from the beautiful city of Chihuahua, Mexico. Chihuahua, and Chihuahua. Chihuahua, beautiful architecture. It's one of the many places to visit. All right, so here we go, guys. I'm really interested to see if Enzo's going to start this fast pace. I think he understands the power that Chavez has. He's a more patient of a fighter, but see how he's already moving in already. Oof. He's already controlling the fight right from Ooh. the start. Big hit there by Perez. Oh! Enzo Perez in red, white, and blue with the uh, ankle protector. Chavez has some bombs right there, man. Yeah, and I think Enzo studied Chavez very well. That's the reason why he's not coming in explosive. But what he's doing is a lot of good footwork. We talk yes. about learning your opponent, Thunder Rosa. If you're Enzo Perez and you know your fighters won twice, both by rear naked choke, how do you absorb that information? Well, you, you know that you're not going to get on the floor. That's for sure. <laughs> you're going to try to finish it on on striking. And, uh, you know, Chavez doesn't back, up, back down. That's what one of the things that he says. And, you know, when you're a little shorter than your opponent, that can be dangerous too. More than a little, a seven lot. inches based on our head to head. And you can see it. Ben is uh, with that kind of length at 135, Ooh, catches insight. that leg. Yeah. Great inside kick. It just hurt. Whack! 
That's how they sound it. It's gonna leave a mark tomorrow. Oh, oh great back kick, back kick, kick, yeah. Could have hit him in the liver, but getting locked in there and the underhooks there for Chavez. Nickname Leechy, a nickname that his uncle started, used to call him that, and it stuck. And so just a lanky of the two, very long ranged, has that reach. So Enzo has to, you know, for us short people here, we have to take a hit and then come inside, take but, a hit to get two back. But you don't, you don't know if you, that hit is, you know, yeah. it's gonna be the one. So it's, it's, you have to really measure it. Ben is doing a really nice job of using his length. Chavez smartly staying out and still able to close the oh. gap. I'm telling you those bumps, he's rubbing them real hard on Enzo's face. Chavez just feels very confident in those hands. Max, you mentioned about his submission, but I don't think he's banking on his submission game. He's banking on those fists. By the way, you'd be hard pressed to find many Bantamweights that are five Woo. feet 11. That yeah. is what Enzo Perez is carrying. See how he's backpedaling, guys? Yes. See, he's not coming forward anymore. I think he respects the power that Big left Chavez hand. has. Oh, missed it. Look at that, man. One, two. That's all that you need. He's inside the range of Pettis now, Chavez. Chavez working well yeah. there. Take down. So this is where it gets history. interesting, right? Because Perez does have that background in wrestling. In fact, that's why he sports that USA wrestling tattoo on his body. However, Chavez does has those submission victories. Yes, and he is very, very strong. He's de I defended those uh, tra uh, take down attempts, and as you can see, right now they're against the Hala. Enzo Perez, who said uh, representing Cuba is a great responsibility. His, uh, his parents, his family's father boxed oh, and wrestling. Hit him in the and a low area. blow. Uh. Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. Now, of course, that was unintentional. Oh. Uh, he does have his five minutes right now. Of course, that takes you out of your groove. And, you know. Let's take a look at it. Right there. Oh, oh boy. Oh, 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 oh. I don't want to see that anymore. Ay, 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 ay. I, I, I even felt it. We should be reacting that way. <laughs> yes, it's thunder. I is, just felt it. Yeah. It's horrible, guys. <laughs> Luis oh. Chavez, I mean, that was pretty flush. Oh. Hopefully, he's all right. Oof, right different angle there. Well, it did catch a little bit, but it, it, I think it grazed covered, him. A, yeah, it, yeah. But it covered but, a lot of ground. Yeah. He's, he's all right. Okay. That's good. He's good. But again, this takes you away from the momentum. Right now, he was doing so well with, those, with the hands. And now, Enzo can capitalize on this one. Listo. Listo. Acción. No uh, warning for Benes, just and viewed as an accidental strike. And we're back in action here in this opening round, just under two minutes to go. So let's see, and, and that, oh, now he is switching stance here, uh, Perez. Curious to see if he's going to go to the, he, he did attempt that oh. takedown. Let's see if he does it here again. I'm amazed at how Chavez finds range those, those, yeah. inside yeah. of Benes, and now he's got his back. Well, you have to be quick, and oh my god, there it is, he oh, might no, be no, no, rear naked. Ooh. Does he go three for three on rear naked? Nah, he's so fast, he's so quick. Thunder Rosa, you said it, don't get in this position. No. Well, he's in that position. <laughs> he is in deep waters right now. A minute and 10 to go. Perez needs to be cautious. Get out of that. Oh, and he made it. Oh. How does he get out? He did it. Right now, there it is. Goes into the guard of Chavez. Chavez trying to double. Chavez is really strong. You can see him he just is. shove him off. Well, Max, you mentioned how do you get out from the position? Well, he did exactly what he had to do. And plus, that background in wrestling, shifting his body to the other opposite side. You know, he played it very well. You know, I was talking to Enzo previous. These guys had over 400 matches in wrestling. 400 Jesus. matches. Jesus. Thunder, you've had pro wrestling, 400 ma pro wrestling matches? I probably have, yeah. yeah but it's a, it's a it's different, a different style. thing. Yes, man. <laughs> Travels a lot to Columbia, Chavez. Oh, okay. oh, oh no, round and pound here. Oh, headbutt almost. Great, hey. great use of the hip there. Chavez from, turns it. Yeah, from Chavez. Oh, a full guard right there. I mean, this could end here. Man, There's 20 those, seconds, those but it's not Those punches, man, you hear it? You hear it? He's not holding back in that position. Flush into the ribs. Chavez has some powers in those hands. Yes. He really does. He has some bricks. Enzo's going to suffer a little bit, you know? Somehow, we're getting the end of this first round. There were fireworks for days. And even to the final second, Chavez still plugging. We'll be back for round two. What a fire plug Luis Chavez is. And Enzo Perez, 
lucky to still be here because Chavez got him exactly where he wanted him. Yeah, so using the handwork and right here, right from the start, just capitalizing, finding those gaps where to strike, using the power from Chavez, pushing Enzo to backpedal Thunder. Yes. And he seemed in very deep troubles. I know he hit him here unintentionally. That kind of stole the momentum, but that really didn't bother because no. he almost nearly finished his fight. Yes, and you know, he almost got the rear naked choke. We were super excited to see that, but it didn't happen. I'm just gonna tell you something. My ribs are gonna hurt for, for, <laughs> Ant, for Mr. Perez tomorrow because those shots were strong. Back here after an action-packed first round, what adjustments can be made as Perez I would imagine Rolova has to find a better way to use that length. At the beginning, he was able to. Chavez found a way inside that range. He has to be persistent more with those footwork because Chavez is coming in. He's finding those openings. So he, he needs to work the angles, make Chavez follow him. You know, I know he was backpedaling there for, for some time, Thunder, yeah. but keep moving, keep moving. Use the range, use the jab, keep the distance. Chavez is coming right at you, and he's using that right hand, following up with the jab. You have the reach. You have the reach. Enzo needs to capitalize it. He's setting it up, but he's not connecting. No, no, there it is. He's on the leg. I guess he heard me. <laughs> I was gonna say. That's a nice move by Chavez to get out of harm's way. They roll up to the Jaula. Great stuff positioning in La Jaula. Oh, that knee the was action. high. Yeah, that was very high, but now he knew how to strike it. And, and it happens, you know, when sometimes you're you're taking on an opponent that's shorter than you, you mm -hmm. and you're the taller one. Unfortunately, uh, you do unintentionally tend to hit your opponent in an area that you do not meant, need to, 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 to strike. Yeah, he's trying to change levels right there to like to do a takedown. Oh, that knee came way up. Great knee. Some yeah. Incredible dexterity here for Pettis, who really is an athlete in his own right. And he's Great. strong, too. Oh, Take yes. down there from the, the expert in wrestling. We saw Ismael Samoda earlier. We're seeing this. This, uh, this division is loaded. These are fighters not even in the top 10. In fast wow. pace, and we talk about the, the lighter weights. You don't see many knockouts. I tend to differ here in Combate Global. We see many knockouts in the 125 to 135. I mean, these guys come with, you know, grenade bombs and everything. So. And I here's mean. the open scoring, gentlemen and ladies. We get to it. We haven't got anything into the second round. We finally do here. And it was split. So everything to fight for in round number two. A slight edge. Ooh, Chavez, that's a shot. Big hit. Perez responds. Great body shot from Chavez. What I'm really, what I'm really lacking from Chavez is he's so confident with his hands. Well, I, I would be too, man. Because every time he's hitting, usually he's landing. Oh. And he's landing hard. Chavez smiles problem. as he got yeah. caught a little bit, but he still got some in with that right hand. Footwork sets up that left hook. Yeah, great, great footwork from both of them. But again, Chavez is really impressive. He's getting his strikes in despite that seven inch height disadvantage. See that footwork from per from Perez, how he, yes. he switches from the front leg to back, then he kind of positions himself in a straight line. He quickly changes again, shifts. Quite interesting, and it, and it really throws you off as a fighter, uh, Thunder. Yes. Because it's all about footwork, man. It's all about footwork. You can't be flat-footed. No. You have to be moving side to side, in and out. As we are seeing right now with Perez. Nice, he changes levels. Either. And sometimes you adjust your footwork to that fighter. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Yeah, that blood coming around the ear. It's coming from the head the of head, Chavez. Yes. But it's dripping, it's flowing now in the second round, that's not gonna change. Benes, by the way, uh, his two victories, both never made the second round. Did lose via decision in November of 2020, but he has a first Whoa. round AOA. Hey. Oh. He lost his footing again. Yeah. He had, no, he had the leg, and then Chavez struck with that, that left. Oh, nice up kick. Gotta, oh, do, sorry, that. Gotta kick. do that more often, those long legs. They yeah. work. Great teep. You know, with again. the teep, with Chavez the teep, in. usually Max and Thunder, that, that teep is used to take your opponent off, but sometimes but some of the fighters have figured out yes. that if you have that power in your legs, I mean, this protection can knock out your opponent. Oh, Machida absolutely. knocked out some of his opponents. Uh, Silva, too. Anderson Silva with a straight kick. 
You know what I feel like Enzo's waiting? He was waiting for that right moment because uh, Chavez keeps uh, getting his uh, arms down for that opening to hit him with that high kick. Yeah, but, but but he's so fast, right? So you have to strike fast. Yes. You have to be persistent because, yes, you're right. He is. He does put his hands down, but you, it has to be in and out. There is a feeling of Enzo oh, is waiting for something. Bench? Yeah, he attempted one, yep. Well, he did get that <laughs> short right hand. I don't think it hurt <laughs> Chavez too much. Chavez stays in the sight line here, switching stances, taking the center of the howl. Oh, great oh, stop, great beautiful, stop there from Enzo, though. Down. Mistake there by Chavez, and he allowed himself to get in this predicament. Great stuff. See how Chavez attempted to go to that hook? Yes. Enzo stayed so calm, waited for the opportunity, went down, changed the levels, and brought down Perez. Or Chavez. And Chavez keeps the, the leg inside the hip, so he's it, it's not advancing. Now per Perez now needs to strike here because if Raul yes. Porrata doesn't see any action, he might stand these guys up. So if Iowa Perez keep landing shots, show the referee that you're showing some action, that you're doing something, and, and, and just do as much damage as you can in that position. Great finish to the second round for Perez, although Chavez not going quietly. We're going to a round three. Good fight, and everything to fight for. Bede is looking pretty dry, and plenty of wind in the sails as we recap what happened in round two. The big part of it there is the takedown by Bede late in that fight, which may sway the judges. We'll find out here shortly. Yeah, he caught that leg as he saw in the opening of that replay shot, and he capitalized landing shots. And then once again, just Enzo. I think he had the just a slight advantage in the second round, guys taking this bout, but did you see how Chavez there connected with that side kick to the rib area, but Enzo again capitalizing, capturing that leg, going straight through. Back here for the critical third round. Max Pretos, Rodolfo Roman, and Thunder Rosa here. And we'll find out the scoring of the second round, and that'll tell us how this third round should be approached. Well, I mean, I, I just can tell you, Ansel tried a lot of takedowns, and he pretty much got, it, got them all. And But Chavez did a really great job defending them. Continue with the takedowns if you're Perez? Yeah, but you have to, if you are, when you're down, you either have to finish or you got to continue a strike. Ooh, Chavez, and there's a Superman punch. There you Short go. Beautiful. There you got the Superman Beautiful. punch. <laughs> He's trying to launch off that lead Ooh. leg. Now I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go on a limb, guys. Here and, and uh, looking at both of these guys, Chavez seems a bit tired compared to Perez. I don't know if Perez was conserving his energy to leave it all out in the third round. Yeah, Perez looks yeah. like the fight just started. Right. And he's still got pop in those feet. Whoa. Big Whoa. spinning back kick. Hits the breadbasket of Chavez. Maybe that was a strategy, you know? I think so. Because Chavez does look like the more muscular one, and you know when you got that extra muscle. You get more tired. There we go. <laughs> and you also have to really reach to get your opponent, which Chavez has done with some success. That left hand hurt Chavez. Yeah, Chavez has extra work, extra he's work, extra hard. Wow. Look how close that is. Enzo Perez with the slightest yep. of edges. It is all level on two judges' scorecards. He does have the edge on one card. Oh! Wow. And so what he's been doing on his kicks, he's been focusing on the body. He got one on the side and one on the front. There you go. Another tip kick. Yeah, but see now how the how the cards have flipped. Now Enzo's the one that has the hands on the wheel for this fight. He's the one that's directing or dictating where this fight wants to go. Maybe that's the reason why he was taking him down so much, so he can tire him up. Ooh. Wow, what a back. See, now he's, now he's just picking and choosing. Volume of punches, yeah. too, and strikes. Yeah. Oh, Chavez in trouble the head, now. Yeah, he, he did connect in the back of the head. That was unintentional. Ouchie. Chavez losing uh, the grasp that he had after two rounds. Another there. takedown. He might get it. He might, he might no. Can't Great get defense. it yet. Great defense. Great that defense is from excellent Chavez. from Chavez. Yeah. He goes down. It could be Curtis. Now he starts to fire. And one of those certainly hurt Perez. Yeah, he can't get sloppy. Perez cannot get sloppy. Another one, sharp right hand. He needs to keep that guard up. He needs to keep that stance. He definitely uh, does state. not want to get punched, so he goes to the floor again. And he keeps his shoulder right on the side of the stomach. You know how painful that is and how annoying it is to be in that position? And it, take, it takes away a lot of energy for both of the men. You know, <laughs> yes. Or women, if you're in this position, absolutely. Half guard again. Maybe the side guard. Yes. 
Ansel Pettis taking care of business in this third round. He has been comprehensive, and we got two minutes 15 to go. But Chavez still preventing Perez from keep shifting from the side guard. See how he has those that figure four leg wrapped around? Yes, sir. Now for Chavez flipping. <laughs> we talked about the strength. Oh. Maybe gets the back again. He flipped the tortilla wow. now. Now he's wow. getting the advantage. Unbelievable. Oh, oh man. Ben is in trouble. He is heading the wow. wrong direction. All right, Enzo needs to keep moving. He keep, he's just getting hit. He Chavez. needs to keep on that footwork. Nowhere to run. This is not the biggest cage in MMA, and Whoa. Ben is finding that out the hard way. Well, they both are like running marathon right now, guys. Chavez is almost running on empty, and he's just putting uh, that foot on the us. Mounted him. For a moment. Wow. I mean, Chavez just gave everything that he had right there in, in that uh -oh. Maybe exchange. setting up the Mataleo. <laughs> at the same time. Very patient. Did you guys plan that out? Yeah, we did. I know. We worked oh, on yeah. it all after. Oh, he here it is. is. Yeah, Holy. Uh-oh. Oh, he, oh, he it. does have it. He oh, has it locked in. He might be it. out, guys. He might. What a comeback this would be. It looked like Perez was winning this no, he's fight turning. on he's, the card. No, and he's Perez is doing what he needs to do. Flipping the side. Really well. Yeah, he did exactly what he had to do. 50 yes, seconds to go. They almost punches are flying right now. But Ben is, ben is incredibly in an instant. The sails were out of wind. And now Perez getting the upper hand. Dijo, dale. He turned him around. Great transitioning. Wow, this Beautiful. is just great stuff, man. Ben is digging in. Does not want a reversal at this point. It's desperate times for Chavez. I don't know if he's done enough to win the round. Well, we'll see right now. He might have. If he wins this round, he could win this fight. Oh. They lost their balance. Another mistake by Perez. Oh! oh. <laughs> man. Oh, good one. Short right. Ten seconds. Oh, man. This is MMA, guys. Unbelievable. Mucho Like clockwork. It always delivers. <laughs> man. That was awesome. Great fight. What a great fight. That was awesome. The Bantamweight division just getting better and better. There's talent in the top 10 and out of it. We'll be back with the official decision with Lupe. My name is Marco Sorella. I just turned 30 years old. And I am born here and raised here in Miami, Florida. But the majority of my family is from Spain, but uh, predominantly Barcelona, and a little bit in Madrid as well. My fighting style is always very fan-friendly and exciting. Um, I know all fighters say that, but if you don't believe me, just watch and you tell me. Um, predominantly a striker, you could say, but I've shown that I'm well-rounded. To be in Cabate for the first time is definitely a blessing. I haven't fought in a couple of years, so this would be a great stage for me to um, show my talents and to let everybody know how great I am. I describe my fighting style like long, elusive, dangerous for any man. Uh, what I think makes me different from my opponents is a mentality, something they don't have, just a grind, a will to win. Tonight I'm fighting against Marcos Loretta. I'd say he's pretty much average everywhere. Decent striking, decent jiu-jitsu, decent wrestling, but he's not great in one aspect. I think I'm better everywhere and I see the fight going in my favor. You've been scheduled to fight in the past, so I figured eventually it was going to happen. What a better time than now. 100% I think I'm gonna win this fight. If it's not the first round, he's not gonna be looking forward to the second round. I'm not gonna be as cocky and as arrogant as him. I'm fully prepared to go 15 minutes of Hell and War. And actually, I would probably maybe enjoy that better. I have zero pressure going into this fight knowing my uh, opponent is the number one contender. I don't have anything to say to my opponent. My actions will be done in the cage. Campbell McLaren is inside La Jaula. And why wouldn't he approve? Everyone approved that. One of the better fights we have seen, and that's saying a lot. There's been so many tonight and over the last few weeks. Who gets the victory? This one's gonna be a close one. Too close to call. Let's go to Lupe Contreras inside La Jaula. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. El juez, Eliseo Rodríguez, anotó 29 a 28 a favor de Pérez after three rounds of much more action. 
Judge Eliseo Rodriguez scores at 29-28 in favor of Perez. El juez Lázaro, 29 a 28 a favor de Chavez. Judge Lázaro scores it 29-28 in favor of Chavez. Y el juez Vicente Rodriguez anotó 29 a 28. Judge Vicente Rodriguez scores at 29-28 in favor of the winner by way of split decision. A favor del ganador por decisión dividida. El Lichi, Luis wow. Fernando Chavez. The margins so razor thin. And Luis Chavez, the warrior spirit, Enzo Perez right there with them. Chavez improves to 3 and 0. Doesn't finish via Mataleon, but he'll take that decision. I, I was just like, wow, this was so close. I mean, there were so many. I thought I mean, my favorite was Enzo. There were so many takedowns that, that he, you know, successfully completed. And you don't agree with it, Rodolfo? <sighs> Never leave it to the judges. Man. Never leave. Well, there Never you go. That's all he needs to say. <laughs> Way to skirt around that <laughs> argument, Rodolfo. <laughs> Uh, we're going to get an interview with Lindsay Cassinelli. Uh, let's go ahead and do the translation on the spot. Bear with us. This is one of the fights of the year. Right. Into the third round, it seemed like he had the fight won. What motivated you to win this fight? I kept on following the strategy to see what I wanted to do round by round. And uh, that's what happened. Lindsay said that uh, she's confined here that this is one of the best fights that we've called. The second round, it, it turned around psychologically what, what happened here. Well, I'm ready. He's, he's a good fighter. He's, he's a good fighter and he's ready for it. So I, it just it didn't throw me off of my strategy. Do you have to push, push the pace and, and I, I have to just go ahead and stick the plan. When we saw the open scoring, it seemed like Enzo was going to take the Cuban, was going to take the fight. But then you took out this dynamite. As a Mexican fighter, who do you dedicate this fight to? I dedicate it to my mom, my family and friends that always support me, my gym, and everyone that helped me out this training camp. Oh, they must be very proud of you that they're seeing us here in the United States in uh, Univision and Paramount Plus. Where do you see yourself next? I uh, see myself fighting another divisions we have uh, much to give I, I feel like home and give you some good fights you wanna, would you give him a rematch of course oh that's good I, I'm his fan he's, he's a good he's a, he's a good fighter much respect to you and for your words inside uh, showing the heart inside of the uh, combate global I'm just throwing it out to the Spanish folks. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. We're here too. Uh, hello. By the way, he says his mother motivates him. She is my example for everything. Uh, and a special moment there as he dedicates it to mom. But this was so close. I tended to think as well, Enzo Perez, based on the, the cards after two rounds, did enough to win. But again, it was going to be close. And Luis Chavez, the beneficiary. And I think, boom, you're seeing it right there. That's the reason why I think uh, that Enzo here had the upper hand. Maybe what the judges were seeing was that, okay, he took him down, but what did he do with those takedowns? Did he strike? Was he impactful with the shots? Because Chavez was the one that was striking the most, and those shots were landing, especially uh, during that, that last round where he literally gave everything that he had left. Yes, but I think on the second round, that's where, where he looked kind of like, yeah. he, he feel like the first day, so he didn't as, as, as you know, confident as, as he should have and, then, and the third one at the beginning was the best and then at the end they were just going you're know, throwing blows together such a clash of styles enzo perez long and lean and then luis chavez built like a keg wasn't going anywhere it took some punishment but was able to give some out great fight though great fight. And, and you gotta love what he said he goes i, I i'm a yeah. fan i'm willing to give him a rematch and that would be huge for enzo perez chavez doesn't have to do it but i imagine both these guys will be seen again in this bantamweight free-for-all 104, I mean, the stats certainly tell you that Chavez 
has a claim at this victory. But the takedowns were really good for Perez. Right. But, but again, it goes back to the conversation, or that argument. What do you do? Okay, the takedown, but what did you do with the takedown? Mata that's, Leon, that's what you do. <laughs> he had it. He, had it. he, did. he, he, he did. He did. He did have some opportunities. He tried it twice, though. Unsuccessful. And that's, and that's always an argument, you know, with the judging and mixed martial arts. It's always back and forth. Uh, we got to remember, man, MMA is still in. It, it, it's been around, but not as long as the boxing and all these other combat sports. Yeah, it's, it's still a baby in the big picture, and it's growing. And that's part of the appeal of watching is that you get to see it grow while it's in this uh, very delicate part of its adolescence. And uh, Combate Global, a big part in allowing these fighters to grow. So, I mean, those are two fighters that are still getting started, and they're a lot better. Every time you go inside the cage, yeah. Thunder Rosa, you grow when you walk out. Yes, and they blessed us with such a wonderful match, wonderful fight. We'll go back from our fights earlier. This is Ismael Kraken Samora. Christian Barasa, the Chilean, had a good start. But Zamora uh, Rodolfo is one of the uh, marquee names right now in Combate, and he proved it. Yeah, Barasa again took this fight on day's notice, and he looked very confident with his striking, but Ismail was just too fast, too quick, on his feet, on his shots, really reading his opponent very well, like a textbook and thunder. He was just too much for Barasa. Yeah, that overhand really just took everything he had, like rocked his brain, and he said, no, 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 I'm taking this home. And at this position here, you know, Barasa just could not do anything at all. Alan Abella stepping in to call the fight. And Ismail again gets another victory. He only has one defeat. And that is only by way of split decision. And usually split decisions, right? A fighter will never tell you, especially in splits. Oh, I thought I won that. You know, that, it, it, it's always a tough call for that. But if you were to wipe that out, this man would be undefeated. He's only gone to the third round once. And that's because of that split decision. Defeat. But I think he learned his lesson and he likes to finish. Yeah, damn. He, he learned. Never leave it to the judges. Yep. And we will look forward to Kraken Samora the next time we get to see him. Uh, it can't be soon enough, and he kept it pretty fresh, fresh with a first round finish. You know what I want to see? Amata Leon, Amata senores. How about uh, <laughs> Chavez Samora, maybe down the road? Yes. One more fight, we will be in the welterweight division. Colin Lubert's Marcos Yoreda. There's so much respect from our fighters, but these two guys letting it known they don't like each other, and they're very confident that their arm will be raised. But only one of them's gonna be right. That's coming up. And uh, we will wrap up the month of July. What a month it has been. Glad you've been along for the ride wherever you're watching, and certainly to those here tuning in on Paramount Plus. We'll get ready for our next fight. The Bantamweights came and they were heard. Kraken Zamora improving to four and one. Luis Chavez improving to three and zero oh with a split decision victory. Now we get ready for Luberts and Yoneda. You don't want to miss that one, folks. Fireworks coming as we put a bow on another cracking card. Miami, the backdrop there. You see this game bay, the downtown skyline, Freedom Tower. Always a, a great destination. It's hot out there, by the way. Yeah. It's hot. Humid, hot. So maybe not as many visitors as you might see at different times of the month in July, but still, this is the place to be. Not according to the Palmetto, Max. Not to <laughs> the Palmetto, indeed. <laughs> and we got uh, some guys with some Miami ties, certainly for Marcos Yoreda, and uh, Colin Luberts calls Miami home now, originally from Rochester, New York. This is our welterweight showpiece with Yoreda, the number one welterweight in the company. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Colin Luberts. Colin Luberts talked about being out of action for two years, and he is coming in loose. Before he had those two years off, his last fight in June of 2020, he was impressive. Two victories, including a first-round TKO victory. 
And uh, he comes here with a 5-1 record. That's hard to achieve in mixed martial arts. Look and at him posing. Look at him uh, strutting. Uh, he <laughs> so, looks comfortable, no? No, he looks like he's ready well, to show off. Confident dude walking in, kind of lubricant. It's been about two years since he finally stepped inside and got some action. He faced a little bit of injuries. He looks good. He's 100% ready to go. And he's fighting a game opponent against Marcus Loreda. Now for his opponent, the number one welterweight. Let's go back to Lupe. Su oponente, Marcos Lloreda. Marcos Lloreda was supposed to fight Marcus Edwards just a few weeks ago. Unable to go, health protocols. He does get back in here, different opponent. He is very well regarded, but he's got a big old target on his back, Thunder Rosa, because he's the number one welterweight. That, he's probably not thinking about that, but it's there. No, he, he said he's ready for this, that the other guy is just overly confident, and he's gonna pretty much, you know, humble him a little bit. It's the difference of they came out to come out to the hollow, right? Calling him very cocky, strutting. Lorena just confident, proud to be inside here. This this is the fight that was supposed to happen some time ago in the state of Florida. They 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 both train out of camps that are miles away, literally. I would say maybe a good five miles, six miles. It's a good local showdown as we go head to head. Yoreda, three years the senior. They're both a tall drink of water at six foot two, all even on the reach. Marcos Yoreda, normally El Lobo, now El Conquistador. He says he's the only Spanish fighter in a gym full of Cubans. He can be funny too as we get ready for Lupe Contreras. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Tres vueltas, división, peso, welter. We continue with much more action and all 305 showdown in the welterweight division. Los jueces on the judges are James Lázaro, Vicente Rodríguez y Ricardo Celis. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, Vestido de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red. Marcó un peso oficial de 168 libras y tres cuartos. He registered an official 168 and three quarter pounds. Con un record profesional de cinco victorias y solo una derrota. He enters La Jaula with a pro record of five victories against one lone defeat. Fighting out of the MIA, Miami, Florida. Colin Luber! Su contrario en la esquina roja, vestido de color dorado. His opponent in the red corner, wearing gold, su peso oficial, 170 libras y media. His official weight, 170 and one half pounds. En 18 combates, mantiene un récord de 11 victorias y 7 derrotas. En 18 pro bouts, he has a record of 11 victories against 7 losses. De sangre española, and fighting out of the 305 Miami, Florida. El conquistador, Marcos. Yoreda, el referee from the DR, Tommy Santana. Tommy Santana from the DR, the third inside La Jaula. Really seen in an emergence at 170, the sweet spot for combate between 125 and 155 pounds. But this certainly takes combate to a whole new level. Two big dudes. It is Lubert in the red. Man, I want really, I really, I really want to see this. How it, how it goes, man. This he, is a this is a chess game, guys. They know each other very, very well. They've every time that some of their teammates compete in amateur uh, events or even pro fight cards they've walked around and they've seen each other yeah so i mean this is like competing against your next door neighbor and what did what did lubert say about yoreda wrestling average everything game, everything average. about him is average everything we'll see Maybe the only thing is that he has more experience on me. But he said everything with such conviction. You believe people when they say it. And Lubert certainly 
said it with confidence. And you see how much they respect each other. It's a very slow pace to the, to the start of this fight because they know what they're both capable of doing. Yes. So they're not using those kicks to keep Collins off. Because Lubert has great, crisp, technical striking, and he's going to get right in the pocket. So Lereda wants to make sure that he keeps him off, and I won't be surprised if he switches levels when the opportunity is right. Because we've seen him just submit people here in combate. He's only had one defeat here in combate, and that's events against uh, Ivan Castillo, which was a split decision. And even to this day, he'll 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 have an argument about that. It was a close one. Yoreda was supposed to fight three weeks ago. His last fight, November 2021. Victory over Keylock over Carlos Marietos. Great right hand. And covering up now is Yoreda. Little left jab there from Lubert. See how Lubert shifts that hip to throw off Loreda Thunder? Yes, I was just about to ask you, what's going on with that hip, that, the Elvis hip, baby? Yeah, it, it, it throws you off because, again, a lot of the power comes from that hip, hip, right? When you throw, especially that right hand, or if you're a lefty, then you know that, yeah. that'll be your, your, your power hand. But all that power comes in there. People tend to think that it's all shoulder work. No, man. That power right comes it. from that hip. That's what they always tell you to position yourself with that back foot, put all that power in just so you can range back and come off full force with it. Exchanging kicks there and continuing to Thunder Rosa that Yoreda covering up that right eye. So a little wake up call. He's making sure it's covered. I don't know if Lubers is going to attack that way, but it's it's taking uh, Yoreda out of a comfort zone, that's for sure. Oh, he got caught in short. Yes, because every time he's getting in the pocket, he's he's able to connect. Yeah, no, that just cannot get in the pocket. Wow. Every time he does, he's done with a fist, yeah. He has to be cautious, that's why. He has to, he has to find it. Lubert is leaving that leg, that, that left, that lead leg out, try to work that out, and then maybe try to go for that leg to capitalize, yeah. grab it, wrestle. Over the top. Not much on that kick from Yoreda. No. He doesn't look comfortable no. early on. And Lubertz, who was talking the talk, is walking the walk right now. Says his emotions don't change. My mentality separates me. Another spinning back kick. And at one point here, you see how Loreda every time you see that he brings down that arm to, to kind of like swat yes. that jab. Yes. However, Lubert is so good and so fast that it really doesn't tend to work against a fighter like that. So yes. it's best that you keep that hand up, keep it steady Both and block it. And, and, and keep oh, it blocked because he's so fast. He's so quick. That right one is so powerful. He's got, yeah. I think it's had get, got him three or four times already. Yeah, so you really can't keep your hands down against a guy like Lubert. No, you shouldn't. Lubert, who has been on the shelf for two years, does not look any part rusty. Not at all. He's, yeah. all, he's always training, he's always been focused. I know him for a couple of years now, and I know him, I met him as a really young uh, fighter, and like to see him now in this platform and how confident he is, is, is really amazing. And look how Lubert just follows him around. Just nice. It's like a mirror image. All right, here it is. And this the is leg. Loreda has advantage here, but he can't give away his back. He is, and he's he needs to rip. Yeah, he needs to rip that grip right there from, from Lubert. Trying to keep an eye on that wrist, but this has been a tremendous first round for Lubert. He's go. trying to end it in this first round. Gets him to the guard of Marietta, and he is firing away. 30 right, so, seconds left. So Lubert needs to use that power, use that weight, land the shots as for Loreda, rip that grip, keep it standing, and then if he wants to go to the ground, let it, may, let it be on his own terms. Yeah. Lubert's still hanging on oh. that wrist, Thunder Rosa. Yes, and that knee, he just hit him in the knee and the, on the body. Maybe one last suplex, couldn't get it off the ground. It looks like we're going to safely make it to round two. Tremendous stuff from Colin Lubert's. So there we go. Uh, Lubert's off to a good start. Yoreda needs to stem the tide here. He needs and, to move a lot. But he, he, just, he did not take that stool easily. Mm -mm. The optics aren't good. Nope, no, it's not. And, 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 honestly, Lubert is, is looking very confident. Is going out there and, you know, deflecting a lot of the shots. Yeah, there, and, and let's take a look at the ground here. See, Lubert's just picking and choosing. Great right hand, so fast coming in. That's why he, Loretta needs to keep those hands up. He needs to be very cautious. Yeah, he keeps swatting it. It doesn't work for Lubert because he's so fast, he's yes, so quick. He is. So you need to be able to keep him up at, at any time. 
And you know that I think the most important part, I think Lubbers knows yeah. his opponent so well. He knows how he's going to move and where he's going to go. Read him like a book. Well, this is where the coaching has to come into play for Marcos Lloreda. We have seen him three previous times on Combate. This is a different looking Lloreda than we've seen prior. He does not like the challenge that's being thrown by Luberts, who caught him coming in. Colin Luberts in red. All right, I think he got the memo. Now he's picking up the pace. Loreda now switching stands, landing some kicks, feel a little bit more confident in the stand-up game. Yeah, I mean, he felt for the first time. He knows what he did wrong, and now he's, you know, looking a little more confident. No, no, faster, but Luberts still, you know, moving along with Loreda's body. Notice, though, Luberts is not as quick in throwing in. He's again doing that shift with the, with the hip, but not throwing in the shots with the hands. Yoreda, who uh, just turned 30 a couple weeks ago. Again, he, he has this Spanish flag. His family's from there, although he grew up in Miami. He calls himself the first guy at the gym, last to leave. He says, I know it sounds cliche, but that's the truth. Got to show that work paying off as Luberts catches him again. And you know, you mentioned about supporting his team and loving his cap as we take a look at the open scoring here. No guys. surprise there. Yeah. Uh, Loreda, just, he's, he's, he considers his, his gym family. Uh, there, there's no doubt. Every time that there's one of his teammates competes for the, in the amateur and the pro levels, he's right there. He's right there as a corner man. It's a beautiful thing, Thunder, when you have support from your team to back you up in everything that you do Absolutely. in the sport. Yeah, again, like we said before, this is a team effort. A lot of times they, they think it's just like singles, but it's yeah. not. It's you have, you know, a family. They become your family. Luberts continues to take the center of the howla and applying the pressure. It's been a little better from Yoreda. But still, Lubers just landing that, landing that jab, landing that jab. That jab. You know, Howard Davis Jr., Olympic gold medalist, used to tell me if you can really make that jab your strongest shot, your strongest weapon, you will win fights. Yeah, that's true. That's the basic move. That's the first one you learn, and that's the, uh, the one that a lot of people use to finish pe others. The welterweights, just the top five, whereas the other divisions have a top ten, and it is Yoreda number one. But right now, that looks like it might be on the cusp of changing and Luberts might find his way up towards there. He's trying to solve the riddle on, on this one. Yeah, but good landing in that, that jab from Colin, uh, against Colin. So Georgie Medina a couple weeks at 170, really impressive. He is your number two as it stands. That man's a stud. Really impressive Chicago-based fighter. Yoreda's face turning red now. Whoa! Big overhand right, Luberts pops away another right-handed lead jab. Beautiful, beautiful. He's playing mind games now. Luberts corner there features Cesar Carmelo. Yoreda looking pretty average, Thunder Rosa, so you were... <laughs> Ouch. I mean, in, 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 Don't make me laugh. <laughs> in the realm of what Luberts was saying, if he's average, I'm better in every category. He looks better everywhere. He's looking right a little now. tired right now, guys. I mean, it's either because he's getting punched straight in the, in the nose or because he's trying a lot, moving a lot, and it's not really connecting. It could be he's tired or he's puzzled. You know, he's still trying to figure out how to get in there and break apart Luberts, but Luberts is just not letting him come inside the pocket. Every time know. he strikes, he strikes back twice as harder. And, and, and look, look at Luberts' oh. face. Look at Luberts, it's already. Beautiful, one, two, go, go to for the takedown. And he set up that simple. left hand with the right. So they have a little shiner under the left eye there, Max. Yeah. Oh, and there's a, it's getting pretty red around the oh, left eye. There's shot the coming gun. down. Luberts Man. looking to finish Let this Let me tell you, now. that shot, that shot hit Loretta very hard. He felt that one. Colin Luberts, a runaway he train again. Yeah, he's feeling it right here, guys. Lu Lubert smells that blood. He knows he has this in the pocket. Oh, Loretta down. felt, that's oh, it. this, this is, may be it, guys. That's it. That's wow. it. He said it. He Man. said it. Wow, he, met, he just broke Marcus Yoreda. Yoreda went to the ground after missing the back fist, the spinning back fist, and he wanted no more part of it. That second round, one-way traffic you for know Colin Lubbers. It was that shot to the body. Yep. 
knocked his air out. He tried to play it off. He backpedaled. He went down, and Lubert just followed through. Lubert, being confident and left confident, and he's saying, "I want that cup. I want that cup." He called his shot. He delivered. It's one thing to say it; it's another thing to do it. But he did. And yeah, Marcos shot. Lloreda, he's still trying to catch his breath. Picking up the pieces. That's why I love MMA. That's why I love <laughs> MMA, guys. There will be a new number one at 170. Man. Wow. Man, that was not an average butt whipping. <laughs> Colin Lubert's the picture of the spoils. You will hear his name and his arm raised when we return. And we are back, and a moment for Marcos Lloreda. Remember, he was supposed to fight a few weeks ago. That fell through, and now this. Certainly look forward to seeing what he can do and bring it back. But right now, the moment belongs to Colin Lubertz, and here is Lupe Contreras to confirm. Este combate finaliza con un tiempo oficial de 4 minutos 6 segundos del segundo episodio. This bout comes to an end with an official time of 4 minutes 6 seconds of round number 2. Your winner, by way of knockout, el vencedor, by way of KO, Colin Luber. Marcos Lloreda looked back, but they are calling it a TKO. And by way of KO, and Colin Lubertz improves to 6-1. And after two years away from fighting, looked pretty fresh. And I'm sure we'll see him again soon, and maybe his name in those welterweight rankings. Taking an image there with Danny Chavez, another well known professional fighter. Great start from this young man. Yeah, he came in tremendous shape, and he'll leave in tremendous shape with another victory in the column. Another memorable night here in La Jaula. Now we turn off the lights and prepare for action following Friday. This was uh, an eye opener. We always say that. We never know what's going to happen. Expect the unexpected. We expect, but what you can expect is a lot to talk about at the end of this evening. And we certainly had that from Luberts, certainly in the fight between Luis Chavez and Enzo Perez, which was down to the wire and a split decision. And Kraken Samora. Disappointed none. You had to love the way Luberts came into the Haula Thunder Rosa. Of course. I, you know, just reminded me how we enter, you know, the ring in professional wrestling. With You know, he had his little attitude in there, and he, he knows he was about to do some serious business in there. He gets the TKO in the second round, but between round one and two, he was dominant, had a game plan, and he executed it. As his striking game was just on point, and Luber just could not do anything with it. He couldn't find an opening to land a shot mm -mm. that would trigger Luberts to fall back. And Luberts was just persistent, following, chasing his prey, connecting with those shots and thunder. I, I mean, it was just uh, it was just unstoppable for Loreda. Loreda needs to just go back, take back of this highlight here. Uh, and, 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 and just tweak a couple of things. Yes. Work on a couple of things here, and, and he'll be back. Yeah, Bluebird was very, very, very simple. It wasn't nothing fancy. It was just, you know, basic, grainy. He knows what he was going for. And technical. He very technical. Very technical, yeah. It was very, very technical. technical. And there you go. You don't need to do nothing fancy, nothing else. He already had his plan, and it was to beat the average fighter that he called. He's, he said, my mentality separates me, and you saw that coming through. And the numbers tell it. 91% accuracy. This one never went to the ground, even though Marcos Lloreda did after missing a spinning back fist. And that was the beginning of the end for El Conquistador. Wow. Today, he didn't conquista. He, he didn't was a conquistador. No, and shout out to Lupe, who gave love to my city here, the 305 showdown. I like it. <laughs> 305 showdown. 305. Look at you. <laughs> My city. He's I a big Marlins <laughs> fan. Yes, I am. Are you? Yes. Loves the Marlins, loves his 305. We'll chat later. 
<laughs> Colin Luberts, <laughs> he also said it was uh, it was great to be here at Combate. They treat people well. Uh, he will be treated well after a performance like that. Christian Barraza and Kraken Samora. The boat goes out to sea, and you're not careful. He will consume you, and that is certainly what happened. Barraza got off to a nice start here, Rodolfo, but Samora found his opportunity, and it was one strike. It changed it all. Yeah, and this right here is the opportunity that Barraza was banking on to finish that fight, but Alan Abella said that he wasn't seeing much action. So he stood both fighters up, and Ismael just said, okay, this is my time to go thunder, landing in a flurry of punches, and that's it. I mean, he, that was it for his man. Yeah, and that he, that's what he came, he came to do, to like overwhelm his opponent, and that's what he did, and he finished him. He sank them. The, the Bantamweight division is loaded, and this is a guy who, when it's all said and done, could be at the top. This is a, a division also where there is a title held by David Martinez. And he they, they've asked him about that, potentially fighting your own yeah. teammate. They Ooh. spar together, yeah. so yeah. those are always interesting. That's We've seen some of Because of all the intel. John Jones, Rashad Evans. That's one of the ones that just comes to the top of my head when you get teammate versus teammate. We know it's gonna be good. It, the, the, the love will be lost by the time we see it. Not to say it, we will see it, but it's certainly a potential fight, and I know the public would love to see it. So Zavoda improves to four and one, and now with three knockouts in what has been his entire career with Combate. Yes, and Gano and Gana is another one that was very popular, teammate versus teammate. And Things change because you, you you end up leaving your team, you go to another camp, you learn something new, but again, you, you always have that, that yeah. taste of that bread and butter that that opponent has because you know it and study that person. And we move forward to the main event, Max. This was down to the wire. Luis Chavez had to give about five inches of height to Enzo Perez. The Cuban had a, an interesting game plan. After two rounds, he had a slight edge on these scorecards. After three rounds, he was on the wrong end of it. Yeah, and this, and this fight was probably one of the best uh, fights we have had in a while here at Combate Global. And even our boss was in there to congratulate these guys for living at everything in La Jaula. Lindsay Casinelli on our Spanish broadcast team called it one of the best fights in recent memory. I love that Chavez was able to get inside Thunder Rosa, inside that lane. You know how hard it is to do that? It, it, when you don't you have see somebody it. Like that, when you have the, it's a kicker that is a, you know, <laughs> much longer than you. You just have to be fearless and just get and in And be there. quick. Yes. Be quick, be fast, be precise. Precise, quick on your feet. That's what will allow you to get inside and strike. And, and you need to follow up. And unfortunately, yes. you're going to have to eat some shots, but you have to follow up with three, four, maybe seven shots to make up for it. The stats very telling and certainly suggest that Chavez was the deserved winner. Takedowns, those where Ben is uh, Kept himself in this fight. Maybe needed a couple more somewhere along the lines. But Chavez, who's so strong, yes. gets a huge win. Those are the good ones, the split decisions, where yes. you, you feel like you go anywhere. If you get the win, you can see it etched on the face of it's Chavez. It's like, almost like extra innings in baseball, right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't always win them, but somebody will. And Chavez, who's now 3-0. Another satisfied night. I'm sure everyone pleased with uh, what you see, and you get the feeling when you see it like this every week, it's the way it's meant to be. The fighters are encouraged to put on a show, and that's what they do. And now we have a number five ranked bandit weight looking to go up. We have a number one welterweight probably going down, and that's what the great thing about rankings is. It's, it's a fluid situation. And there will be championships at every division. It's hard. It's hard to stay on the top in mixed martial arts. Yes, what? Because you, when you think you have it, you you really don't. Somebody else hungry comes and takes your place. And and by the way, the ranks are, here, are coming up very soon again. New rankings. <laughs> There's new rankings coming up every single month. It's so much fun to be able to follow. Next week, mucha más acción, and it's Buas is back. Oh, that's good. One of the best. He had that one defeat in the tournament, but he has been unstoppable before and after. Ali Cat Alvarez is no joke. And he will be looking for a win that could define his career against Christian Perez. 
Axel Osuna, Solarsano, a big one there as well in that incredible bantamweight division. That, folks, is a fantastic card highlighted by Alvarez Perez. Ooh. 30 shows, man, every single Friday. 30 shows starting in April. So uh, they'll end in November, so it's pretty much every Friday. So you know where to be, whether it's Paramount Plus or wherever in the world, you tune in for Combate Global. Final thoughts on that fight, on that fight card? Uh, Man, I, I'm impressed with Conor Lubert's his striking skills yes. just on point. And then Israel Zamora just proving that he's just a, a young prospect that has much to deliver. Let's see what the stake for his next opponent is. And then Chavez with his with powerful uh, boxing that he had. I mean, he stuck to that and like, he, we saw it with the, with the, the stats. We know a little bit more as we uh, end uh, the evening. Everyone leaves satisfied, including Colin Lubertz. Moving up the welterweights on behalf of everyone here who makes it possible. Our production team led by Artie Izquierdo and Victor Bagge, Thunder Rosa, Rodolfo Roman. My name is Max Pretos. Placido Domingo!